Hi, welcome to my show. Today, uh, my guest is Qais Al Sindi. He is a great artist who I ended up meeting um, by working on my book, The um, Iraqi Americans, The Lives of the Artists. I was looking for great artists around the United States, and somebody said, you know, you, you really have to contact um, Qais. He's a great artist, but because you lived in California, I, I wasn't aware of him. So. Welcome, welcome to, our sh to my showcase. Thank you very much. Thanks for the introduction. And um, so we got lucky today because normally you're not in Michigan. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you live in California, uh, but th you have been here a few times. And um, actually, you're here now, even though you weren't supposed to because of this wonderful exhibits that you've been touring. Tell us a little bit about that. And then I would love to share some of your artwork that um, I've had the uh, privilege of viewing. So wh where were you recently? Um, I was in Washington, D.C. I had an exhibition titled 16 by 20 by 20 in a Quds Gallery, in Jerusalem Fund Quds Gallery. And uh, I exhibited 20 pieces. All these pieces were size 16 by 20. Now, um, I'm going to show some of the images. Are any of the ones here? Are, are yes. This was mm -hmm. some of it. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Are these some of your newer pieces? I don't remember yes. when I interviewed you for the book. That was a couple of years ago. So um, can you tell us a little bit about this artwork? Yeah, what I did in this exhibition, I collected uh, canvases and stretching bars from all over the world. Like wherever I travel, I get the, the canvas, uh, especially like used canvases and like basically like painted over canvases. And I take them and I paint over these canvases. Um, what m the meaning w of this, I took these canvases from these different places and bring them here in America to show that these uh, old canvases are travelers on which I depicted and painted new paintings and figures to tell the story of these people who they being displaced or moved like voluntarily or involuntarily from their places which called home to another place, like looking for secure, for safety, for stable, for better life. Well, since you brought that up, so um, I would think that part of your background has something to do and associated with these kind of paintings. Yes. So if you can tell us a little bit about your background. So you were born in Baghdad, I believe? Yes, I was in Baghdad um, and I got my master, uh, my bachelor degree in engineering. Mm -hmm. And then I didn't find myself in this career of engineering. I switched to fine art. Um, I was, I have this like, this love to art since I was like five years old, maybe. And then I gave my degree to my family. This is my degree. And then I... <laughs> <laughs> it's like, yeah. now I can move on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, like everybody wants like their son to be like a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer. Okay, I'm an engineer. This is my degree. Okay, now I will turn to see my life, you know. I got then a Bachelor of Fine Art also in Baghdad, four years. And another three or four years, I got my master's degree in Fine Art. And I was, my specialty was my thesis about the Christian art in Iraq and all churches and monasteries in Iraq. Mm -hmm. The time that I was doing the master degree, it was exactly the time of the war, 2003 war. When the, the Americans Iraq, yes. yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. invaded Iraq at that time and toppled the regime. Mm -hmm. um, I used to have to make a visit, a survey, to visit all these churches, religious shrines, and monasteries in Iraq. I have to travel to like north of Iraq, south of Iraq, every city, every province, everything, you know. I have to see all these things. And the country was under the war zone, you know. Everything is war zone. It's red zone, you know. I have to cross all these like um, conflict areas to make. So it was very fairly dangerous. It was it risky, risky, dangerous, very difficult. But because I speak English, like I be able to like maintain mm -hmm. like uh, what to do you know mm -hmm. to manage what to do i visit all these churches got a good documentary about them then i make the discussion of my defending of my thesis i got an excellent degree then in 2004 i decided to leave iraq you know it, like consequences of the of the war was very bad especially of uh, the sectarian violence mm -hmm. the sectarianism was very tough especially we, the Christian, yes. we caught in the middle. We mm -hmm. were the 
the victim of this war, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, uh, I'm just wondering whether um, there was a bombing in, in a church. Was was it after that that you felt like this was it? Because I know a lot of Iraqi, Christian yeah. Iraqis kind of felt like that's when it was very obvious that this is no longer um, a safe place to stay at. Yeah. Um, the bombing of the churches, especially when they used those uh, booby-trapped car, uh, it was a very major significance of uh, leading the Christians to live in Iraq, you know. And uh, um, fortunately, I pictured and filmed all these churches before they got bombed, you know. Oh. Yeah, I have good documentary about 167 Christian places in Iraq in my thesis. Hmm. Yeah, but after these uh, bombing of these churches, this drived um, drove, uh, sorry, the Christians to leave Iraq, you know, and I was one of these Christians that we left Iraq. Okay. And also because of my major, I am artist, you know, they, the extremists in Iraq, they, they, f they see the artist as like people that are doing something against the will of God. They call it forbidden or prohibited or haram, I mean, you know, they call it haram. And uh, I remember one of my project in the College of Fine Arts, I painted semi-nude uh, ballet dancers on a very huge wall, around like 10 by 20 wall. It was one of our projects in uh, environmental uh, class. And they wiped up uh, this, uh, this mural, like from, uh, um, from, the from, from that wall, they make it white. And I saw that this is also, these kind of art is unwanted there in Iraq. So they destroyed it. They destroy whatever, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know, yeah. And then we seeked a country to stay in. I came to California. Mm -hmm. Then I said, like, the journey of 1,000 miles starts with a step. And we, let's start. Let's do it. And you, so you came here, um, and uh, as a new immigrant, mm -hmm. you were able to focus on your career. I know it hasn't been that long that you've been here. How, when did you arrive? Like 10 years. 10 years. Yeah. But in those 10 years, mm -hmm. you have been very active. You have been very successful. Um, you've been very, you know, very, very productive. Um, and I remember in interviewing you and, and the book, um, let me get the Lives of the Artists, which I, I was able to uh, interview 16 successful Iraqi American artists from around the United States and different states, uh, um, different states around the country. Um, one thing I remember is that you said that your success was due in, th in your belief in yourself. Yes. Okay. Yeah. If you can expand on that, because you know, as artists, whether they are writers or filmmakers or painters, sometimes that quality is lacking, and that's where some t that is what makes the difference. And not, yeah. um, if you can elaborate on that, what do you mean by that? And, and where did you receive that kind of belief in your system uh, in yourself with regards to your work? Yeah, it's uh, also sort of confidence. Like it's you have you are confident of what you are doing, mm -hmm. because I believe the art, like whatever you are, we are doing, is a kind of a tool that we use to convey a message, a very strong message. And you know, like our messages are stronger, deeper, and more influential like than the messages of the politics, the politicians them, themselves. When you see an artwork, you say, yeah, this artwork is, wants to say something. That's why I try through my I artwork to say something, to convey an idea, a concept uh, about what I'm saying, like to protest about something or to, um, you know, oppose something you know, or agree about something. And um, I believe in myself because I believe uh, the thoughts and principles of uh, peace and hope, this is what we are missing in our world. Like um, I always say, instead of throwing stones like on each other let's collect these bricks and stones and build a bridge and if we understand each other then we will start a conversation mm -hmm. then we may love each other and then th there will be no war actually um c that's another subject now you just reminded me because it was part of when i was interviewing you a couple of years ago uh, about the taking instead of throwing these rocks at each other to actually build a bridge um, yeah. that was like a project that you had been working on yeah um and what did you do with that uh, i remember that i don't know if you continued with it or it was something yeah uh, we we continued to doing uh, 
Disney. This was one of the projects like called Caravan, I think. It was like two or three years ago. But I'm still like working on the same idea. Yeah. How we can Because we still need it. Yeah. Yeah. How we market ourselves, market our art to the people that they can see it and also to say something. For example, also like uh, this show, like 16 by 20 by 20, um, I painted like 20 paintings and I asked poets to write poetry about th my artwork. Mm -hmm. And then it's, as you see, it's a combination between the art mm -hmm. and also between the, the words here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I believe that uh, uh, my paintings is telling the stories. And when I gave these uh, I gave these paintings to the poets to write a poem about each painting, um, he, the, the the poets they 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 depicted something from their imagination. They were telling different stories. Maybe yeah. uh, it depend of their own interpretation or inspiration from the pieces that they saw. It was nice collaboration. And you see here. Um, I have young poets and also I have very like pioneer poets mm -hmm. in, in my in my in th this project telling the stories of diaspora and the people in exile. Well, I really love your artwork. Um, you know, the I always enjoyed the colors that you use and even the story, even despite what the story might be, even if it's associated with something of a sad nature. Yeah. But the the way the color is and the meaning that is brought it brings you peace. So this is what's ironic, the that <laughs> despite the story, because yeah. some of the stories have are sad. Or you know, there's a one that I remember of uh, of a farmer who was um, uh, poor, and then you he I forgot, but he was carrying dates. Mm -hmm. I remember that one was really touching. Yeah. But again, when you see it, what you see is the beauty of it. Yeah. Even in the poverty, even in this sadness that you're expressing as yeah. the artist. One of the gallerists uh, <laughs> told me uh, when I was making an exhibition, it was in San Diego, the exhibition titled Let's Begin Again. Mm -hmm. And I got the pieces to the gallery. He said, your paintings are amazing, but they are museum pieces because they, are, they have a lot of sadness. They have a lot of messages too much. You know, I told him this is the art. This is the function of art to tell something, you know, and if this touch you because you feel this is like, you know, it's, there is a sad there or there is something they want to say. This is what the art is supposed to be, you know, like, for example, the other picture, if you can show us mm -hmm. the black and white one. Oh, uh, yes. yeah. Um, you see here, it's a um, it's a woman carrying a nude man over her head, you know, and uh -huh. and uh, this nude man is her country. And the title of this one is The Woman Who Carried Her Country Over Her Head. And, and, and you see here also the symbol of uh, ox. Ox is the symbol of fertility in the culture, of, in culture of, of Iraq. When I paint, I don't like think, okay, this painting will be nice and this house will be matching these colors. It's good decoration, interior design. I paint with a lot of energy, concepts, and feeling. I don't think, okay, this is the code, uh, color code of this piece, this, you know? Yeah, but uh, this is interesting what he told you because uh, saying that it's too much, and I think that that is the real art is when you go in depth. Uh, and I'm wondering, as I'm hearing you, when you, I hear you say that, it seems like even in literature, people kind of want to, uh, you know, like water down the, the meaning and the depth of something. And I didn't know that even maybe in art that, people might be experiencing that where they just want it to be lighter and then just kind of want to see things on the surface. Yeah. But this is real art where it goes that deep and we keep, the more we look into it, the more stories we yeah. find and the more meaning yeah. we, we find. Mm -hmm. Do you think that there's like this shift that's going on with the art world or is that just, uh, with regards to people, I mean, how they view and what they kind of expect from it? With this technology that you are living with, mm -hmm. with the Instagram, Facebook, you know, Snapchat and everything and one billion picture loaded online, the painting, the art, has to have a very vital role to do something, mm -hmm. you know? Because how you can like show yourself a way of tons of these images, mm -hmm. a lot of images, like, what piece can stop you to see it? 
on the street, banners, you know, right. signs, like you open an Instagram, millions, millions, like just like hashtag something, millions, you know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, what you can do, the R is like the painting, I feel it's poor, like to show itself. It has to be very provo right. provocative and very touchy that can like somebody, okay, I want to see this one, mm -hmm. you know? That's why I see that the painting has to stop the audience it has to Just be that original, like the originality of yeah. it. And that takes a lot of work because some people, you know, there is a la laziness aspect where sometimes people just feel like they just want to put it out there. Bef it's it's not so much about the work, but about yeah. putting their name out there. Yeah. But you're about the work. So that your work does stand out. Like when we were... Um, my assistant and I, when we were trying to choose paintings to put in the book, by the way, this is, oh, I did show the, the book that you're in, but um, so there's samples of your work. We had such difficulty choosing because they were so incredibly meaningful, uh, but that's real artwork when we, when we don't have to just flip and say, oh, well, you know what, this one is the best one and that one. We really had difficulty picking out the ones because there were so many great paintings, but they, they really bring, um, I don't there's something about them. I always like like older literature, British literature, and and I feel like yours has that kind of really rich quality that you can just look at the painting and you would want it to be on your wall. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. And like just for fun, like a friend of mine sent me a, a WhatsApp mm -hmm. of uh, a 3D camera. Like there is a room you get in the room, and there are more than like 200 cameras. Mm -hmm. They picture you, okay? Mm -hmm. Like picture you, and then you end it to have a 3D sculpture of yourself, like 3D printer, you know? Okay. Like you go in this room, stand with your family, with your baby, dress up, everything, and like one hour you get a sculpture and it depends what size you want it. Oh, so you get an actual sculpture or just- Yeah, like a actual sculpture. You go inside the room and they and they give you a sculpture after okay. they like picture you, like yeah, shot yeah. you, you know, uh -huh. like million of cameras that are <laughs> taking picture of you. <laughs> and after that, by the end you say, okay, I wanted six ounces, uh, six, sorry, six inches, Inter. 12 inches, 18 inches, whatever you yeah. want, you pay for that. And you had to take your sculpture. And now I'm saying the contem contemporary sculptures, what they can do with this. Of course, they are genuine, uh, authentic, and this yes. is just like- That's true this is something is commercial you know mm -hmm. but you see it's very challenging like when when you can go with one hundred dollar get a small sculpture sculptures of yourself and your wife and your anniversary and go hey we are happy you know yes, yes. like also the painting there is a, a machine called michelangelo mm -hmm. they give it like any painting and they will make replica exactly same touch same touches uh, same technique of that painting you know Th i feel now the the role of the art, the real art, is very challenging. It's very difficult. It has to be very unique. You have to do something very new, to be very creative, very imaginative, to do something with all these tons of pixels around you, you know? Well, but yeah, despite uh, what you're saying about the challenges, yeah, based on the hours that you work and that this is your main source of income, you're a professional full-time artist. Yes. Um, so what makes you that? That's like, what is the secret to that, that somebody maybe can see, you know, um, like if I, if somebody's working hard and feels in that frustration or their stuck level, what advice would you give somebody that's in that? Or, or if you can give, what is it that makes you be able to focus like that on your work within, with just being 10 years in this country? Yeah, yeah. I believe like somebody, ha the artist ha has to be himself, you know? And um, it's very difficult to be away from the influence of all like great artists, you know, like all these great arts will influence you. You have to be yourself first and also you have to be unique and you have to have good connection with people to show your art. Also to compete with a lot of paintings on this world, a lot of artists. What makes you like what make your footprint on this floor? What makes you here? You know, you have to be yourself. You have to be very exceptional, extraordinary, something you are doing, and it's not easy. Like, to, to live as an artist is not easy. Mm -hmm. And especially if you want, like, to show what you want to show and also to market yourself. Like, these two lines, they are traveling parallel to each other, you know? So what, what kind of, and I know that um, 
you spent quite a you're very committed um to your work you spent quite a number of hours yeah a day like what's your uh, daily schedule like because that also would give somebody an impression you do uh, treat this as serious work you know you commit to the hours and you treat it as a business so that's another aspect I think one time what did you say like you work six hours a day or something like Was well I work more than that really? uh, I work like from 10 mm -hmm. uh, 8 to 12 hours around 10 hours you know yeah 10 I, hours yeah I, okay. eight hours practical I work and two hours I work like on my my PC doing all these uh, oh. office yes. of office things but like uh, actual paintings I work like around 10 hours 8 hours yeah mm -hmm. but I can't reach that man who who used to paint 18 hours Van Gogh you know or Picasso oh, I didn't know he did okay what did yeah. Picasso do a lot they work a lot <laughs> yeah you know and I am watching uh, his uh, series show genius did you see it no I did not yeah it's um, genius I think it's National Geographic something like that mm -hmm. um, I saw it like on the airplane genius and they have four episodes uh, until now mm -hmm. and he's working 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 you know mm -hmm. just you have to work have nice mm -hmm. studio and keep working 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 mm -hmm. and let the dealers the curators you know the organizers take care of marketing your art you just have to focus on your work and then you will be very productive Pro yeah. and I would imagine that the people that you are working with that when they see that you are that productive plus the quality the quality yes. with the quantity that that combination yes. they will look at you differently they will take you more seriously I think that goes with any kind of work uh, yeah. that if you produce and not give up very easily you per persist and I'm thinking this is what that belief system in yourself that confidence is that you know that you will arrive it, yeah. it'll take hours it'll take days months maybe years whatever it takes but that you will arrive and it seems like that's what you kind of did for yourself yeah it's uh like you see the light at the end of the tunnel and you keep walking. before you get there <laughs> <laughs> you see it <laughs> before you get there yeah, yeah you see it like from far from, you know yeah, yeah, even you if you don't before you even see it yeah yeah well um what is uh, what are you working like on right now and what are the any exhibits coming up or um, yes. what, what's your major focus right now I have another uh, project I'm working on it's called black white or gray mm -hmm. it's about uh, the absolute idea uh, it's um, all the paintings that I did it's black and white and uh, here because many people say you are mastering the color here mm -hmm. and here I want to show my like uh, my ability like to do something just black and white mm -hmm. and the philosophy of this I'm saying that there is nothing like pure black and there is nothing 100% white mm -hmm. everything is gray mm -hmm. that means you are not absolutely right and not I am not absolutely wrong everything is relative is the theory of relativity you know and in this way if we can accept that we are not 100% right and maybe the other one is right then we can like understand like start a conversation instead of argumentation you know mm -hmm. uh, we are artists like we see if we, I have a gray mm -hmm. in my hand gray page in my hand and I put it on a black background it will turn to be light mm -hmm. but if this gray I put it on a white background mm -hmm. it will be dark you know mm -hmm. everything is relative everything yes. sometimes <coughs> it's illusion mm -hmm. you know it's illusion just we have to not to say yes I am right and you are wrong Yes. Just to un like accept the other, you know, accept the difference of the others. Yeah, I really like that. And um, I was wondering, um, so we have about five minutes left, and I wanted a little bit to talk about your um, ancestry and how you feel that uh, correlates with who you are today as an artist uh, and just as a human being and based on the experiences that you've had being born in Baghdad as a Christian, all these dynamics, they always, everything, who we're born, how we're born, where we're born affects who we are. Um, how would you describe how that has influenced your, you as an artist, um, as a man and as an artist actually? This is a very interesting question because a lot of people, they used to ask this question looking for answers. Mm -hmm. Like they said, you are from Mesopotamia. Mm -hmm. What make you like uh, the descendant, like this grandson of these like old artists, you know, this great civilization? They say, we know that Mesopotamia is the cradle of civilization, culture, innovation. What a, I think it's genes, you know? And uh, when you are like surrounded by all this 
like art like the this heritage of art you feel you will be influenced and also it's building it's in your in your blood that's why i feel the sumerian babylonian chaldean akkadian syrian all these great cultures they are giving this treasure to their sons to their grandsons they continue to doing this that's why we from Mesopotamia we are like unique in this in this side of art and we keep like carrying this message yes and uh, I like how you describe that because I do feel that given that these are our ancestors somehow we don't know all the details obviously yes. and we have arguments about them but the reality is that once you find out who you are it just kind of gives you that power to understand what you're capable of doing your, your responsibility your responsibility and um, I noticed that you know after the things that happened in Iraq and with the destruction of some of these monuments that a lot of the people with that heritage felt a stronger uh, drive to yeah. make sure to rebuild through their artwork, through their writing, yes, including myself. I felt that way too, to keep this alive because we understood the value of it. And I always say, you know, um, even if they try to destroy these things, but the energy of that wonderful civilization will continue as long as the descendants understand that. And it's not just the descendants, a lot of people who un who appreciate history and, and that region, you know, they've done their part as well. Um, but it's, it does make a difference when you know that this is part of who you are and you were born there for a reason. Exactly. Yeah. So uh, anything else that you want to add? We do, we have like a, a couple, two minutes. And if you want to add anything else before the show ends. Yeah. I, I want to say like everybody of us has a role, has a responsibility. He has to be in charge of. If he has an, like a talent or something to say through his talent, uh, I, I wish if he can like show it to the people, you know, because in this time we are living we are documenting, making documentation and archiving of the era and the time that we are living. Mm -hmm. That's why we took all this her heritage of our ancestors, you know, with those reliefs, murals, sculptures that we saw. We have to do th something as you are doing, like like writing books, as I am doing, doing like exhibitions. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think this is very important for this time. Well, yes, and I totally agree, too. And actually even this show this show started because of that reason that seeing there's so much negativity and people using um, technology in a negative way or even the news when really there's other ways that we can use the same thing everything is available to us it's yes. just how we use it and kind of like you said about the taking the rocks and throwing them uh, we do that with words even but when there are so many people such as yourself I feel like when you come on air and you can share your talents and your wisdom with other people you are um, we are creating something beautiful in yeah. the world in the media right exactly. so yeah so this was part of my contribution as well um, so and especially in this country there's so much opportunity for that because you're allowed you're allowed yeah. to you know you you're just free. said you're free yeah. you just expressed how the difficulty you had in in Iraq and doing that and here we are we're free I think that's another reason that we produce is because we were we come from an oppressive region and we know the difference so but I so enjoyed uh, talking with you and you will be leaving I know for to California soon so I do hope that next time you come you also you know connect with me uh, and then maybe we'll have you back again thank okay? you very much thank you thank you for coming on thank you very much